It's spoiler in time. This is the show where we take all the hard work we do on Cord Killers, understanding the universe of streaming TV and cable and theaters, and we put it all together and watch some stuff and talk about it. This week, we'll be spoiling Hannibal, season three, episodes three and four, Rick and Morty, season five, episode one, the return of Rick and Morty, and Loki, episode two. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. <laughs> Dude. And we have a feast in front of us. Like I was excited already when I realized that o Loki was just Rick and Morty in the MCU. Now we have Rick and Morty and Rick and Morty. It's great. I, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. Let's start with Loki episode two, the variant. Uh, we jump right to Loki being out in the field. He's he's an agent of the TVA now helping people in the Tennessee Valley figure out their power needs. No, uh, helping the time variant authority uh, figure out uh, how to catch him, uh, except Brian, because this is more than time we can say him is her. Yeah, uh, real, real quick, just to check, because sometimes I'm dumb. Uh, like, we weren't supposed to recognize that that actor portraying female Loki, right? As what? I, like, I don't know, like as having been in something before. Not, not that I'm aware of, no. Great. Uh, 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 because I didn't, and I didn't care, and I was too excited across oh, like, the board. The, like you like, meant, like, was it a stunt casting of like, oh my god, I can't believe Sophia DiMartino is? Yeah, I don't think it was that either. No, no, yeah. no. This is her first Marvel thing, right? Uh, so. Right. There's always there. So often I start to run off half cocked, and then I find out like, like uh, they did imply that it was her, you know, seven movies ago in the God, whatever. Yeah, thing. yeah. I, uh, that's that's what during, know, during Winter Soldier. So yeah, uh, don't 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 you do that. Wait, wait for reals. During during uh, or not Winter the Captain uh, Falcon in the Winter Soldier. Yes, the lady there. I don't know who she is. I'm sorry. I don't care who she is. But it wasn't Loki. Yes. Wait, or, you're talking about uh, I'm saying uh, Elaine from Seinfeld. Showing up? No, 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 no. The the blonde lady. What is happening? Oh, oh I'm saying God. I had the same Pe experience. I had With that experience. God, had the same fear. We all had the same fear, but none of us should have been afraid. This is a new person. Great. Okay. No, good. Good. I mean, We're all on the same page. Great. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. Good. Uh, Tom. Yes, Brian. I like the show very much. <laughs> yes, I've, I've gotten that feeling uh, from you, and I, I, it doesn't sound like episode two uh, diminished that in any way. No, as a matter of fact, we were talking earlier today in the Weird Things podcast and After Things, and um, uh, I, I wouldn't call it an argument, but I got the strong impression that that uh, Andrew Main was wrong in that, <laughs> in that he thought that uh, the new uh, Rick and Morty was better than the new Loki. Uh, mm. And his reason was because uh, uh, Rick and Morty was a tighter script, which I can't deny, but, uh, ooh, did I love just simmering. Look, man, I don't want a fast soak in a hot tub. I don't want to get in and get out as fast as I can. You if, say that if, all if, the time. <laughs> you, 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 nor, you, sometimes I do. Yeah. Sometimes a hot tub is so good, I want to soak in it for a little bit. I don't, want, I don't want your boiling water all over my body in and out in 21 minutes. I want to soak for 47 minutes. It was great. Who are you? I've literally never heard you. Oh. That. That's Wait, wow. oh, okay. And, but it's good. I, I agree. It's a great, it's a great show. I'm, I am also enjoying the pace. Tom? Yes. Brian Fandango. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, can you hear me? Uh, like, so, <laughs> yes, like, I can like, hear you, uh, Man, oh, man. Like, uh, the moment it went to the quote unquote Middle Ages, I was like, that's a Ren Fair. And, and sure enough, it was. And that then, was uh, brilliant. and, and yeah. that moment. Especially, and especially the complaints of like, you know, this is important to some of us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, some of us need this. <laughs> yeah. That was the could, phrasing could, that I yeah, loved. I would have been fine if it would have been the typical, like, hey, what are you guys doing here? You can't, you know, whatever. And instead, they gave us a little more. They gave us a little like real reaction. I love that. And that was, that was Agatha, right? No. no. It was someone who looked very much. I I did that take. Oh, okay. I went to IMDb and ah. looked it up. It was not her. Oh, okay. okay. I also I I was uh, Kate Kate Berlant as Red Ren Fair Woman. I, I don't think we talked about this before, but the whole way they transport in and out of realities, 
um, I don't think I realized how time bandits -y it was. And, and mm. yes, I know that, uh, again, the irony is not lost on me that that's exactly what they do in this week's Rick and Morty with the portal that is a square or whatever. But, uh, but, but the whole like coming out of the ground and then, and then coming through with seventies colors and, and the soft focus or whatever, there's an aesthetic to Loki that is, is tastier than than i ever dared expect and and oh yeah I i'm fully, a huge I, fan of the of the of the world right? correct uh, and, of and the aesthetic uh, yeah I, I i fully i fully you know disclaim uh i have an affection for uh, uh, uh file folder binders and for um uh, rolodexes and for reel to reel uh devices and for microfiche and for anything old-fashioned old telephones is, oh and, my god yeah. anything mid 20th century chef's kiss gives me all of that also happens to respect me when it comes to understanding the rules of time travel stuff so when loki figures out that it's like oh he's hiding in disasters uh here let's go to where, let's, where what they what they do doesn't matter because it gets wiped out by the disaster although i, I like then they lot. get close to pompeii and 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 uh and they get worried and he's like come on no it's not i was like why are you still worried if you uh, but i you know it's the doubt of like well it's one thing in theory it's another thing in reality sort of situation i thought that was fun too well and and, and you could tell like mobius is is like oh man i'm a fan in theory but yeah but now like now i might be implicated in a time crime uh -huh. <laughs> like what's yeah. going on here uh uh I also like that they were not over the top uh, with the consumerism when it comes to the disaster of the hurricane in Alabama in 2050 or what, what have Oh, you. and they're hiding out in the superstore yeah. warehouse thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I like that little projection in forward of like, Hey, uh, Costco is going to meet Amazon someday. <laughs> and this is what it'll look like. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and when there's a fight scene, you're going to grab whatever happens to be around. Right. And it's not yeah. gratuitous and it's not like, uh, uh, Oh, only dove brand would <laughs> blind me, you know, or whatever. I, I think it, there were moments that were gratuitous. Uh, oh, really? there were I mean, the huge light up Dell and the huge light up arm and hammer sign, was they definitely little... caught my eye, but also that exists in a store. So yeah. I for I I definitely I'm with you, Bryce, of like, oh, that's definitely product placement, yeah. right? The Dell thing in particular caught my eye. But also I'm like, yeah, but that's also product placement in a store looks like that. So I'm like, that they that's what it looks like when I go to the grocery store and they have a big old end cap for something. So okay. They also bought a bit of goodwill from me with making the brand of gum kablooey, you know, like a fake name or whatever. It's mm. like, okay, so yes, we're gonna see some amount of real brand names, but but in it's not like they're gonna make a well, a and the point with yum. Kablooey was like that dated when they were right. because they're like, oh, mm -hmm. that brand didn't exist until. Whereas with Rock's Cart Superstore, they could they could have because it's near future. It's 2050. They could afford to put real brands in there. Uh, Do you think that they're going to make a real Kablooey gum? I think that they will. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, they yeah I hope are. so. And what I hope it is is secretly just Gator Gum brought back from the dead. <laughs> Gator Gum was the best. Now Hubba Bubba. No. Gator Gum was. Good though, yeah, right? Not wrong. I, like, like yeah. you're already salivating thinking about it, whether mm -hmm. it's the lemon lime or the mm. or the orange. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, it's uh, it's Lady Loki, I guess. I think so. She's got the horns. Like, there's some controversy about whether this is actually Lady Loki or somebody else. No, the I think I, I, is the I, other I, theory. I think it's definitely Loki. Um, I must. It could be the enchantress putting on the horns to pretend. I must admit, I was a bit surprised that our Loki, mm, uh, it, last week we talked about how, like, like the for reals, our Loki we saw was a child who wanted to take over a world, developed an adolescence, developed mm. a sense of conscience, sacrificed himself, and ultimately dying at the hands of Thanos. That is the official record of, of Loki, right? What mm -hmm. we are following now is adolescent Loki, somebody who has just suffered his first defeat, somebody who's still kind of obsessed of, with thinking that he's ahead of the curve or whatever. Um, so it does make sense that adolescent Loki, our, our current Loki, would 
jump out with the TVA. Um, and also, it puts him in the perfect position because, I mean, I hate to say it so plainly, if what you want to do is catch the girl, that's what I would do too. I would, I would jump through the, uh, the time gate, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, well, the other thing that, that you touched on there that, that, remi- that reminded me of something is uh, they play with the idea of like Loki's secret plan is to get an audience with the timekeepers and try to take over the TVA and Mobius, you know, in, in what is even in just two episodes become standard fare of like, so you're probably thinking, oh, I'll get an audience with the timekeepers and take over the TVA. Like Loki never has a plan that the TVA already isn't aware of, or at least Mobius isn't aware of. But we also got some strong hints that the timekeepers aren't actually there. And we've gotten a bit of a hint that maybe even the purpose of the sacred timeline is incorrect. Like, what I expect next is to, spoilers, at the end of this episode, essentially she 9-11s the timeline. Right. (laughs) And then uh, 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 I'm going to guess that the two of them are going to find themselves in an interesting conversation where she makes a very compelling case of, Hey man, uh, uh, yeah, of course all the timelines had a war against each other. It's called survival of the fittest. Don't you believe in Darwinism? And he'll have a hard time saying no to that. I am absolutely looking forward to what the fractured timeline gives them permission to show. What, cameos what what if test scenarios what things can they now trot out uh to be to to kind of delight us in the sideways as they're like oh yeah the, this entire timeline is splintering off pretty much anything is possible now so here's the part that i don't know is how do you create a theatrical conceit that allows you to save anything for the new Doctor Doctor Strange movie, mm, mm-hmm. like like uh, to me, it's like, yeah. See, I'm I'm just I'm just here for the like. Oh look, we got a preview <coughs> of She Hulk, or uh, uh, oh oh look that that character that Coulson's still around. Great, that's kind of you know fun stuff like that. But I get where you're going at, which is like yes, but if you fix this, then there wouldn't be a multiverse again, which would has been the premise since the beginning of Loki of like oh, but if the TVA is there, how do we get a multiverse of madness? Yeah, I ooh. Now, all of a sudden, I'm wondering, like, d- does, does our TV Loki survive the series? Which is something I hadn't even considered. Could be. Yeah. In his own Could be timeline. the only one that does. And maybe that becomes the timeline that we, that we follow or whatever. And, and by, maybe and, we and, don't. Maybe we don't solve the fractured timeline entirely. And that is where Doctor Strange comes in. Oh. I mean, can't they just... Uh, and and because uh, we all have time travel PhDs, but w- it w- isn't the Written problem in books. front of them? Isn't the problem in front of them that they will just go to the very first timeline that happened and then purge it and then continue to do that? Uh, I like it's a lot. They sent out a lot of bombs, but yeah, isn't that what they do every single day at the TVA? And they don't have like they have a different time space. So it, I mean, it, it's big, but I do have a feeling that next episode they're going to be like, this is bad. It's going to take us some time, but we'll be good. I I got the impression that they're out on that because you're right. When you can travel in time, you never run out of time to do anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, That it will be that the splinters keep fracturing, right? And so you do have to hurry up, quote unquote, hurry up. Because the longer you let a splinter run, the more fractured it gets. And the longer it takes you to fix it. Mm, I see. So I can very... Practically, I don't want to say easily, but practically think of a storyline where we spend two to three episodes watching the increasing horror of fractured timelines and amazing, hilarious, crazy things happen or whatever. But then there comes one moment when their chief scientist says, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is we can prune everything after this moment. And then it's like, uh, oh, well, what's the bad news? This moment occurs after the one mega fracture. And mm. we can't go back before that. We mm. can prune everything. Well, we'll take that. And then, and then the watchers 
show up and they're all like, this is the what if universe. You'll enjoy it <laughs> and in they, future yeah, episodes. Yeah, yeah. They, they do go I do think what if universe is going to exist. The, it could even exist in the time in which the fractures exist, right? Mm. You, would, you wouldn't even have to leave it there. But I, I think you're right. What if is going to uh, play into this for yeah. sure. Also, I don't think the timekeepers exist. They probably don't. I mean, why I think are they, they used lizards? To. Why would they be I lizards? I think they used to exist, maybe, but oh. they don't anymore. The bureaucracy just goes on. Yep. Oh. Or shadow leaders. Mm-hmm. Maybe there are physical lizards and they're controlled because they got lizard brains. They got those dumb lizard yeah, it's brains. Like Modoc. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe uh maybe he goes to visit and finally it's just like uh it's one person backlit and it's like it's me stan lee <laughs> <laughs> that'd be amazing all right any other thoughts on loki 102 no i think the pacing is wonderful i think the aesthetic is glorious and i don't expect everybody to love the aesthetic as much as i do but boy does it really do it for me that is Loki episode two of season one. Let's talk about the other Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty, uh, season five, episode one. And, and I'll start us off here. Uh, this was just Rick and Morty. It was, it was, it was not, it didn't feel like a season premiere. Uh, it didn't feel like, Oh, you know, they're warming up. I felt like I was, I was in the back in the middle of a season and I got a solid Rick and Morty episode that made me laugh. Uh, it kept me interested and uh, I, I enjoyed it from, from soup to nuts. Literally. Um, so I'm in a complicated position in that I have a 13 year old daughter, a, a couple of teenagers, and um, I want them to like the things that I like. Sure. I don't want to have to explain the complexities of middle-aged parents going through therapy and entertaining the idea of having a threesome. So weirdly, I don't, even with Aquaman, especially <laughs> I, I like, what about, uh, uh, it's a fine episode, fine episode. <laughs> Well, okay, but I, I understand that you you had that uh, that that consideration. Uh, but did you enjoy it? Otherwise, is that or were or, or were you overshadowed by all of that? Um, I don't know how much I can divorce my my watching of an episode through the filter of like, am, am I excited to share this with my kid or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, like for example, one year ago uh, when they were doing the, the Akira stuff and I'm like, Oh my God, I love Akira so much. Like, like I can't wait to show this to my kid and explain to them why Akira is awesome and blood gore, exploding heads, floating heads, controlling people, all that stuff. Loving all of that, you know, uh, cubifying people that grow legs and run around. The complexities of 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 the disastrous natures of poorly conceived relationships less less my bag but he is mr nimbus he sure is he sure is tom uh what about the what about the hoovy the stuff i i, I loved i loved that conceit of like we're just aging wine but the 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 somewhat inconsequential movements uh of morty uh cause an entire civilization to turn to to war and superstition and then again i i i, I thought that was good classic rick and morty stuff. it was it was and i liked it i liked it just a little bit earlier when they did it in invincible uh ooh, so close oh they they just got beat to the punch on that one in invincible yeah, dude. Remember the Martian dudes who come in and they the age one at episode a different with times? With that, with that conceit. Uh, multiple episodes. They, oh, they this, this, this was an entirely different situation. Though. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 you. Mm. This was comic. The Invincible thing was not comic. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Correct, correct, correct. But 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 the playing all with right, time right. and and the, and the fact that small moves have large consequences over the long time. Uh, look, I'm not going to lie, Tom. Everything goes through the filter of, do I want to watch this with Josie? And, You're and, uncomfortable and, and, with and, Mr. Nimbus. No, I'm not. 
I was also never comfortable with Namor or uh, uh, Aquaman. That's to totally be fair. I think yeah. that's totally fair. I, on the other hand, uh, I took a little offense at Mr. Nimbus, to be honest, uh, really? as, as someone who enjoyed Aquaman as a kid. Yeah, Aquaman was one of my favorites. And and I, I've said that and I, I've been criticized for that. Uh, <laughs> and and but, I will continue to be criticized for that. But uh, I, I actually I was like, oh, come on, leave Aquaman alone. Did, didn't Jason Momoa revitalize him? But it, it was also funny. It was a funny character. Yeah. And he um, like he also saves the day like he like it's true. Does Mr. End up Nimbus is the hero of the story. Yeah. Um, except for when he gets Rick arrested because he can also control cops which is just that was so funny <laughs> it's just I can control his secret cops. power is like he controls the police power. which is that's what people say about politics oh they control the police but like what if he like literally controlled the police it was really good it's, yeah. also I don't want to have to explain that to my 13 year old when the cops started humping each other I don't know <laughs> Ah, uh, well, folks, that is Rick and Morty. Any other thoughts on Rick and Morty 501? Uh, no, it's great. It's great. I'm glad to have them back. I'm glad that we have two of them. It's awesome. Let's talk about Hannibal season three, episodes three and four. Uh, that would be Secondo, episode three, Secondo, just that's what it is. And episode four, Aperitivo. Uh, S slight spoiler alert i did look at show at uh episode titles in the list on hulu and i noticed they stop doing the meal related titles later in the season I'll, I'll be curious if if it's obvious why but uh for now we're still on the meal related italian titles secondo and aperitivo uh bryce and i were kind of texting about this uh this week and feels like these are character studies rather than episodes, which is a big departure for Hannibal, which started so procedural. Uh, Tom, Tom and Bryce, I, I would like to formally, and I come with all humility here, uh, to, uh, to propose a, a format change for how we appreciate Hannibal episodes. Okay. Um, suffice to say, um, I, I really have not cared for these last two episodes but I don't want to take any wing, anything away from anybody else. So if you don't mind, I would love to only hear what you guys liked or thought of these episodes. Uh, I am yeah, no I longer, mean, I am no longer a trustworthy witness at this point. I, 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 it's I, fine. You right. can ask to not watch. That's yeah. That's no, fine. no, no, I'm, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep watching. And, uh, but, but, but I'm going to okay. do everyone the favor of not saying what I think. And I just want to listen. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, we were talking between the shows as well. I, for whatever reason, had it in my head that this was only a seven episode season. Um, I thought that because we're doubling up and that means it's going to take us seven weeks to do, go through these 13 episodes. And I, uh, I have some appreciation for what they're doing right now. I think it's interesting that they are really focusing in on the night of, 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 uh, the attack at 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 Hannibal's house, mm -hmm. um, and that we're really trying to see everybody's side because there was a, a bit of a time jump. There's a lot of like we that like Jack gets fired. Hannibal and Demarie move to to Florence. Will is building a boat. Um, you know all of the stuff with Alana. Like I, 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 I think I do respect a little bit that at least here we are. Uh, kind of stuck in this moment almost we're orbiting that moment at the attack on hannibal's house and we're saying look a lot of stuff is happening we're gonna reset here's this person here's this thread here's this thread and and really take all of those threads and give them a boost into here is everybody's motivations and actions so that i guess later in the season we can kind of get full circle again but uh, but uh this week especially after hearing your criticisms of the show last week brian it was it was a little it, it, it became very aware apparent to me that like oh we're not even like progressing time forward we're kind of going back and looping a lot to see these character focused episodes which is is cool and works well for the aesthetic of this show which is 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 very artistic and very uh unique um but also can be difficult if what you're looking for is a continuation of the types of story from season two and one. I didn't like how procedural it was in season one. <clears throat> mm. I liked when we got a more ongoing story about the relationship between Will Graham and Hannibal Lecter. 
Uh, I am not liking the change in tone of Brian Fuller in season three. And yet I don't think it's bad. I, I feel like I'm either not properly equipped to appreciate it to its full or maybe just a little impatient. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't see it as entirely self-indulgent, although I could see someone lobbing that criticism at it. I do, I do think there's probably motivations and reasons for, for, for the filmic quality that, that he brings to it, uh, that people love. Uh, and I get that. I'm not here for that exactly. And so I get this mixed feeling that I sometimes get with Twin Peaks, which I, I've mentioned before, where I love the story. I love the characters. I don't always love the way it's told, mm -hmm. but also understand that there's more to the telling than just like a straight plot and character. And that's one of the reasons it's good. Uh, that said, this dragged for me quite a bit here and there, but when it didn't drag, I loved it. I loved the Lithuania stuff. I loved him going to the, the Lecter estate mm. uh, and discovering backstory on Hannibal, that progressed story. And I was very excited for that. Uh, I, I don't love the relitigating uh, the night. Uh, that stuff is where it does get slow, but I did love how that informed Jack possibly killing his wife. Uh, they leave it some, somewhat vague, yeah. but seems pretty obvious that he, you know, took mercy on her and, and shut her down. It, which It also is, is pretty clear in that scene that whatever he did, he did with her pre authorization. Yes. Right. right. They gave, they gave us her saying like, this is what I want. She, she didn't want to be alive at this point. Anyway, we already knew that from season two. Uh, so it's not that I hold it against Jack, but also that is delicious in a world where Hannibal's like, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. There, there are reasons to kill. I, Jack had one yeah. there, you know, I, I have mine. Uh, and, and, and all of us would quickly start pointing out what the difference between what Jack did and what Hannibal did. Uh, but it, but it's a fun comparison to be like, well, Jack, you, you are also technically a murderer, even though we would think you have purer reasons and pre-approval and all of that, which, which, uh, which Hannibal thinks he has reasons and pre-approval all but spelled out in the moment where Hannibal jabs the ice pick in and then says, you know, to a uh, uh, Scully, she pulls it out. And he's like, well, yeah, technically yeah. you killed her. Or killed yeah. Him. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed that in the first episode. I was not having fun in Aperitivo pretty much at all. I really did not like that. We spend episode four for whatever reason, really letting you know that Dr. Chilton is alive despite getting shot in the head. Oh, I totally don't believe Chilton's alive, but I have to accept it. Right. And like, it, it, yeah. it, 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 and like, I, I, I really, I don't even remember the name of the, the pig guy, the swine guy here with the, with who got, you know, ed up by the pigs. It's Mr. Plinkett. <laughs> but I like, I don't really. <laughs> uh, problem is, is he's, 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 he's a cannibal. <laughs> he's a cannibal. I forgive him. I, I was I was never really big on that storyline between this brother sister dynamic thing, and now that he's back and and playing a big role, I feel very ambivalent about it. I uh, I'm glad that there's some heat on Hannibal, and it's very interesting to hear that like oh there's actually this big global manhunt because of because of this guy's you know advertisement or whatever, but. Boy, am I, 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 I did have some trouble with the pair with, with episode four. I just, I don't like I, these I two did people. Like the, I did like the Alana Bloom stuff. I, I, I like the explanation of her reaction, her becoming the therapist for Verger. And then we realize that she's no longer a passive player in this. She's doing it on purpose because she wants to get back at Hannibal. And so does Verger. Uh, I mean, Plinkett and, <laughs> uh, and I, I I was all in on that. I didn't like the Chilton World Tour way, but I I, I get it. It's a device uh, for for introducing us to all the various reasons that people have to go against Lecter and why they might or might not want to do it. Uh, I think a lot of Bloom has the most interesting reaction here. However, uh, I was very confused when she goes to see Will Graham and then realizes Will's already left. He's on his boat, and I texted Bryce and Brian. <laughs> I was like. 
is he taking the sailboat to Italy? Like, I don't didn't quite get that. Well, Bryce, you had a pretty decent explanation, but I'm still not sure it's right. Well, and I, so I almost texted sense. you back because I made that assumption before I saw the end of the episode where you see him sailing the boat. I thought it was all like, oh, well, we saw him building this boat and maybe it's like a subtext thing. And no, that's like the final shot. Uh, and so I don't think Will Graham sailed the ocean either. <laughs> that doesn't seem like something one man could have and he done. he took his boat all the way to Italy. <laughs> I, I would like to believe that I've been pretty consistent in my distaste for uh, everything being made of rubber and there being no consequences to anything. Mm -hmm. um, of all the shows, I, I never expected Hannibal to be one that would that would give me that especially uh, when they've killed so many characters off before beverly like losing a big character like beverly you, you, you're speaking about chilton mostly here or something else uh, well and also like 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 we talked on on the previous episode where he pushes what's her name out, out the window Alana, like oh Alana. she's definitely dead and it's like nope psych she just has a cool cane now and it's like okay what about this dude who got shot in the face nope psych uh He's got a thing and a you thing. You can just do that. You can't just do that. Will, you can't just get shot in the, it's, in the it's, middle of the it's, head. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, 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 uh, yeah. uh, at I was some with point, Alana Bloom sub surviving when she was suspended on wires. Like, oh yeah, I guess, <laughs> you know, they get it to her fast enough and she's mm -hmm. going to be paralyzed for life. And then the next scene, she's like, eh, just, just need a cane. Go. I'm fine. Um, and that's pre time skip. I believe, I, I believe these yeah. episodes are pre the eight month time skip. I don't want to take anything away from either of you, but I have to imagine that in the writer's room, somebody said, all right, guys, just hear me out. Walks over to the whiteboard, starts writing words, and then reveals the words monster mash. <laughs> like, what if all of his victims were still alive somehow and they all came for him. It'll be a Children graveyard smash. Dr. Chilton, <laughs> walk on in. I mean, this is, and, I was deeply and, disappointed. I didn't like them very much, but I don't want to take anything away from uh, you guys. And, and you know, I, I think, but uh, this this is this is assumptive. So take everything I'm going to say with a grain of salt. But we we know that Hannibal had a very strong cult like following online um, while it was airing, and once it was done airing, and we're seeing the beginning of season three be very character focused. And I almost wonder if a lot of that is influ is partly influenced because there is such a there there was such an an intent a, 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 a I don't know a, an attraction from the fans towards these characters and their relationships. Um, where we've we've started very character focused and we are waiting for more story stuff to kind of emerge. We're waiting for progress to emerge, but now we're kind of, you know, uh, as Brian said, we're kind of soaking in the characters right now. Um, yeah, it, 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 it feels like sometimes I feel like it's nobody wanted to say no to anything mm. uh, a bit. And I wonder if it's, if it's less a political thing of don't say no uh, to any ideas and more of a crap, we really didn't think we were going to get a season three. Uh, sure feels like so it. no bad ideas, everybody. How do we make our way? And I'm wondering if it finds its way a little bit as the season progresses. And maybe that's why the episode name was changed. I don't know. Maybe. I hope it gets good. Yeah. I I, I do too. Well, the way to stuff was good. I really liked the 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 vampire lector complex stuff. That was intriguing. I like where that's going. I mean, it was gorgeous for sure. Mm -hmm. Not sure I understand the relationship of like yet. Okay. They planted right. a lot of seeds there. They right. may not germinate, in which case I'll revise my opinion. But right now I'm I'm like, ooh, okay, so maybe that guy is what turned Hannibal into that. And uh, obviously he ate his sister because he wanted to forgive her, so his sister was worse than he was. And there's some intriguing bits in yeah, there that I think uh, could play. And bit, I'm bit on the nose on the second of the two episodes where he was like, well, I have to forgive him by eating him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, come on. Uh, I... I it was a little hammy, but I thought that it was a good counter to what I think is still very good ambiguity over Will's um, ultimate goal with Ethical Hannibal. Position, yeah. Is 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 he trying to be uh, Hannibal's partner, or is he is he honestly trying to get justice for all of his victims? And, and, and it's it's very I, I hard to tell because he is empathic and very like 
in, I, I, in deep. I, I think at this and point, I don't know that Will knows. Yeah, correct. I, I, he, I, he talked about that when Jack's like, when you called, did you call when you went to it? I'm sorry, not when you called. When you went to the house, did you go as his friend or did you go as my friend? And Will's like, both. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. no. It, it was when the call. Because he and tipped it was him like, off. Were you calling to warn him? It wasn't call. And okay. it wasn't yeah, yeah. until I heard his voice and, and that stuff. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs> mm. All right, that's Hannibal season three, episodes three and four. Graveyard Smash. Thank you all for being with us next week. Loki episode three, Rick and Morty episode two, Hannibal episodes five and six. We're doing two a week on Hannibal. Don't forget, uh, you can get all these episodes early as a patron. Thank you, patrons. Patreon.com slash cord killers. We'll spoil you again next week. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>